Okay, so the second assignment is going to start now, and it's basically you're going to do a movie or TV show uh, intro or credit sequence. Okay, um, and I've got links to that in uh, Canvas, you know, just so you could take a look at some of that stuff. It's let's see, so it's files, virtual reference, and then uh, homework two reference materials are all in here. So you could take a look at those. You know, as always, you know, I recommend people look at professional work just to get some inspiration. Now we're going to do 3D for like the next two weeks, but you don't have to do 3D in this class. I'm just teaching it because, you know, everyone's got to learn it at some point. You may as well learn it when there's no consequences, you know. So, like I said, you, I don't recommend doing 3D for your final assignment because it's just so time consuming. But you do need to learn 3D. Uh, all motion designers have to know it. So I, your basic tools, like I said, they're up here and they auto extrude. This is your selection arrow. And these are your transforms like position, rotation, scale. These are your camera movements right here. Or you could hold down Alt or Option and use the left mouse to rotate the middle mouse wheel to... Uh, pan side to side or tilt up and down or the right mouse wheel. I mean the right mouse button to zoom in or zoom out. Uh, your object manager is over here and that's basically where you have all your files that are oh, well I should say all your shapes and whatever shape you've got selected your attributes manager is going to change and your timelines down here. So all that's what we did last week. So I'm going to click on the little arrow. I'll add a cube move it up a little bit and then I'm going to add a torus and I'm going to scale it up just so it's larger right and then let me just fix that with I can click on it here Let's see the ring radius that's probably how thick it is there's my radius right here so this is probably how th thick it is right there so let's try 10 There we go. So the pipe radius is how thick it is in this dimension. So if I scale this up, I can then make that smaller there. That's how that's working. OK. So I'm going to make this oops, oops, scale it out here. There we go. I'm liking that. All right. So I've got my two shapes. Let me just uh, tilt my camera, holding down Alt and the middle mouse button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera by clicking here to add camera and I'm going to add a light and I'm going to move my light a little bit. OK, I'm fine with that. Now. Just a reminder under display, I did garage shading so I don't have to keep refreshing, clicking this button. Uh, let's move that up a little bit. OK, so as I said, whatever you click on, your attributes will change. So for the light. I'm going to change some of the light settings second all right so if i want to change color i'll give it some color click ok and there you go you also got hue saturation and uh value like how dark or you could use a color temperature if you want the intensity is how strong the light is and you can change the type omni shines in every direction Let's move this up a little bit so we can see a bit more. OK, I'm happy with that. Now. I'm going to click here and add a plane and a plane. Scale that up. Such and I'll zoom out a little. OK, so once I add the plane, I'm going to get more shadow interaction with it. Why is the. Now let me move this. There we go. Now it's going to interact with it a little better. All right. Perfect. Right there. All right. Now let's dive into some new stuff. I'm just scrolling through my notes. I'm going to click on the light again and go over some of this. 
So under shadow. Map soft is a faster render, but it's less realistic. I'm going to do area. It's more realistic, but it's going to be longer of a render. Let me click the render button, see if anything changes. Yeah, see now we're getting a more accurate uh, thing there by clicking the render button. All right, so I'm going to go back to my light. I'm using area. And then visible light, I don't want that on because then you'd actually see the light in the scene. So that's good if you're doing like a Broadway sign or something like that, or you need a light bulb. Uh, there's harsh shadows in here by default, and it's got a very like retro 80s look, which isn't very flattering. So here's how we're going to fix that. I'm going to click on ambient illumination. Again, I'm in my light. Here's the attributes under general ambient illumination. Now we're starting to get some softness in there. So it's coming along a little bit better. And now let's see. I'm going to go. To my settings, remember, this is where you change your project settings here and then. I'm going to click inside my render settings. On effect over here. And then ambient occlusion. Excuse me there, I had to sneeze. So I clicked on effect and that shows ambient occlusion. And that's greatly going to help with the shadows and I'll explain that in a second. And I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to render it. And this is ambient occlusion. It does some shadow wrap for more realism. So the deeper in we get, the darker the shadow is going to get. And then the shadow wraps a little bit the way it does in real life. So right here, this just shows you how much more advanced this is compared to After Effects, because now we've got ambient occlusion going with our shadows, which will greatly help the quality of our render. Just there. So are there any questions so far on? Oh, this is the four view. I could always click here. Let's try. Go to. Camera. Camera here to get back to my camera. And then I can just adjust my scene however I need to. And again, I'm just going to go to garage shading just so I can preview it a little bit better. Any questions so far before we move into the more advanced stuff? The main difference, OK, the main difference when we use objects or primitive shapes, they're automatically extruded, whereas in After Effects, they're not. You have to extrude them. OK, so I'm going to delete all this. And we're going to tackle text in 3D. So text would be. In the splines, so I click on the pen tool. And I go to text. Now watch what's going to happen. I'm going to hit the render button. And there's nothing there. OK. Everybody see that? Objects and primitives auto extrude. Splines do not. You have to extrude them and choose what type of extrusion you want to do. OK. So if I click on the font right here. And uh, I'm going to move the camera around just so it's. A bit more front facing. I'll zoom in a bit. OK. So I got my text and here is where I can edit it. There's the edited text. On the screen. 
And let me zoom out a little bit. You could also change the font and all that stuff down here. OK, so we've got the font we want. We've changed the text by typing in here what we want it to say. And we've got a camera in the scene. This is the render area, the light gray. So that's what we're going to be seeing through our camera. Now. The next thing I'm going to go over. With splines, like I said, you have to extrude them and you extrude it with a NURB. These are NURBs right here. And that's the extrusion right there. So I'm going to drag this extrude. I just clicked it and it entered here. So let's see what happens if I. You see the arrow change. So here's my selection arrow. If I click and drag, do you see the little down arrow up here? That means it's parented into here. So the text is parented inside of the extrusion. Now, when I click my render button, we've got some 3D text. Splines need to be extruded. Your extrusion options are right here. So there's the splines. That's where we got our text. And then we extruded it by parenting it into there. Any questions on that? OK, so I'm going to delete this extrusion oh, and the text went with it. Let me drag it out of it. That's what I had to do. Now I'm going to delete it. OK, if I hold down Alt and I click on the extrude button. Or, you know, I hold down Alt when I click here. That's what I should have done. Hold down Alt when I click there. It's automatically going to parent it into it. OK, so that's a little shortcut when you're working with type. But you don't always want to have your parenting set up like this for splines. And I'll show you why. Uh, so let's go to the extrude. Here's our options. The offset. How thick it is. Subdivision. Uh, that's how many. How smooth it's going to look. Caps. You can bevel any way you want. You normally don't want a hard edge that's you know that's unrealistic so giving a little bit of a bevel to your 3d will always make it look a little nicer um, and we'll probably see that better when i put a light in the scene like such you don't have as hard of an edge now which is a bit more aesthetically pleasing all right, so you've got the idea of splines need to be extruded. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to show you another type of spline in a second. We're going to do a sweep NURB this time. And I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to add a spline by clicking here on the pen. I'm going to add a circle. And if I hit the render button, you're not going to see anything because the circle needs to be extruded. And I'm going to do a sweep extrusion for this next one. So I'm going to add sweep. And this is what we're going to use to extrude it. So I'm going to drag my circle into there. We're still not seeing anything. And I'm going to need to add one more shape to it. I'm going to do a helix. So I'm going to go with my spline order like this. Uh, put at the top. Sec. Let's try this. My circle, make this smaller. And let's try putting the circle above it. There we go. So watch what happens when I change my 
hierarchy here. Um, if I go extrusion, the total shape of the object and the profile, it's wrong. But just by clicking and dragging and changing it, for a sweep to take place, oops, I keep hitting the middle mouse because I'm used to using a blender. I keep doing it again. For the sweep extrusion to work, first it's the profile shape in the parenting, then the shape that it's creating. And I'll show you what that means. I'm going to grab a different spline. This time, I'm going to do a cog wheel. I'll do a flower. And I'm going to put the flower above the helix. And let me change the radius of that a little so we can make it a little smaller. What that did is instead of a circle shape creating that, we've got the flower shape as our profile now. See, there's our flower. And we can change the number of petals. Let's do five. So what's happening here is... Let me move this helix out of it. Did it again, sorry. So this is our sweep. We're using a flower shape as the profile and the shape that it's ultimately creating is this helix. So that's our parenting order, the extrusion, the profile, and then the shape that it's creating. And I'm going to get rid of that flower and put the circle back. And I'm going to go to the helix. And some of the things that are neat is I'm going to change this. And you can get far more complex 3D shapes in a, let's make that 20. in Cinema 4D than you could with After Effects. Like you could never do anything like this inside of After Effects. See, and we can just keep going and messing around with it as much as we want. I'm gonna change that number. So again, when you're doing extrusions, parenting order is important. Any questions on the sweep? extrusion. It's your pro your pro the extrusion, then the profile, and then the shape that's being created. So if I get rid of my helix and I use the flower, we've got a circular profile creating a flower. See the difference? It's all about your parenting order. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. Now I'm going to do a lathe nerb next. Lathe is like Revolve in Illustrator if you've ever used that. So here's my extrusions. There's the lathe right there. And a lathe nerb will be like you draw the silhouette or the profile of what you want. So like balloons, light bulbs, those are examples of lathe or like a bottle. So I'm just going to click a few times. And I'll end there. And I think when I'm using the pen tool, you hit escape a couple times. Yep. 
You hit escape a couple times, that ends your path. So there's my spline. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on Lathe to automatically parent it. Grab my tool here. And I'm going to move my light a little bit just so we can see a little better what's happening. And that is a lathe extrusion. I just drew the profile. See, so there's my spline. Here's my edit select. So I could, I grab the point and I can edit the point on my spline where I want and get a real time change. Like such. And you just move your point in 3D space on whichever axes you want to have it create that. And then I could click on my lathe and my properties change. And I could say, okay, so it's got a round bevel. Let's give it a small bevel. Shade it like such. Any questions on a lathe NURB extrusion? Okay. So I'm going to delete this. All right. Now I'm going to show you another little thing here. So I'm going to click. If I hold down shift, it's giving me straight lines, just like an illustrator. A little higher. I'm going to click here, add an extra point, and click there. And I'm going to hit escape to get out of it. So I'm now going to do spline arc tool. Let me select that point. Line tool. Let's see if that's how I selected. Nope. Escape to get rid of that. Delete that. So if there's my spline. Okay, now I had to have the spline selected there. So now let me try the spline arc tool. I'm going to click on that one point. Try. Oops, don't want that. Let's delete that point. And OK, there we go. So I deleted that extra point And I just chose where I want to add my spine. So going in one direction, it's going positive. And the other way, it's eating into the shape. I'm just doing that by clicking and dragging. And now I've got that nice complex curve without having to draw it. Any questions on that? Oh, okay, so I'm going to hold down Alt. Click on Extrude. And let me... That's too much of a bevel. And then the extrusion would be under Object. Yeah. I... Let's move our camera. And now we've basically got something like a puzzle piece from that shape that I drew. So it's a combination of, you know, pen tools and extrusions to get your 3D looking the way that you want. Delete that. Now, there's lots of fancy things that you can do in which we'll call it Cinema 4D. So I'm going to choose, let's see, where's that? Put a cube in there. Oh, 
for this one thing, one second, they moved it. Those are your deformers. Hmm. Where did they put it? Should be here, but it's not. Interesting. I'll spend one more minute looking for it. I'm looking for array, A-R-R-A-Y. Help you with that, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's okay. I, I didn't expect anyone to know the answer to it. They, this is what happens when you change stuff all the time. All right, so we'll skip array. Array is like a repeater, so I'll take this opportunity instead of doing it right. Come on. That's weird. Let's delete all this. Put a cue back in the scene. Okay, there we go. And let me just change the angle a little bit. That's another faster way of getting to a uh, check my notes. So we're not doing array. Oh, okay. Now I know I'm going to do next. Okay, so it's over here. I'm going to show you the deform function. So if I choose bend and try the cube inside it, see something. on the bend. There we go. You'll see positive and negative, nothing's changing. So let's change our parenting order. Let's put bend inside the cube and test it now. Now it's doing something a little bit better. Again. So it should be, let me check the parenting order for that. The deformer should be inside the shape. So I'm going to put my square there. I'm going to hold down Alt and hit Bend. Let me switch that around. Now it's working, see? And the number of segments will give you a smoother curve in your bend. Let's see where those segments went to. There we go. It's in the cube. So let's keep this at one. The higher this segment goes, let's see. 
the closer we'll get to being a circle with our bend. And if you start getting a rough patch, you just add more segments to it in the object. They're right here. And it'll smooth it up right away. So that's an example of using a deformer. To use a deformer, you have the shape and it's parented inside the shape. It's the opposite of using an extrude nerve. That's the way the deformers work. Any questions on that? Okie doke. So we'll go over materials real quick. Delete this. I'm going to add a sphere. Go. All right. And materials, they moved those. It's down here. OK. So if I click on create, there's materials. I'm going to do a new standard material. PBR is short for um, uh, photo based render or like physical based render where it's more realistic looking. One second, we'll get some water. OK. So to edit a material, you just double click on it and it opens up the material editor. Obviously, the most basic one of all is color right there. And once you start editing the material, it updates here in the preview. Let's see what else I want to go over with here. And then over here on the side, you can add new things to it, like reflectance. Specular is how sharp the highlights are on it. If I click on transparency, Fresnel is uh, based off of the how do I edit how transparent it is? Oh, these are just different types of refraction. Luminance right over here. That's like a glow. So let's give it a blue glow just for the fun of it. So it's a red color making a weird blue glow. And then I'll just click out of here. And to add this, we could drag it onto the shape or put it up here, right there, showing it has the material on it. So now if I hit render, seeing that, and let's put a uh, plane just so we could see a little bit better. Let's see what that's doing. There we go. So if you want to add a material to this plane, same thing. Just click on create. There's your material and then you do whatever you want with it. Uh, and I can just drag it there if I want. Render it out. There you have it. So that's uh, materials. And if you want to duplicate this material, you hold down command or control and drag it. And now you've got a duplicate of it. So I could change the color of it to, let's say, green. OK, and. Uh, put the new material on that one. Like such. So it's a fast way of keeping consistent uh, materials in your scene. You just hold down command, click and drag it to the side. Any questions on what we covered tonight? Because I got through as much as I wanted to for this evening before we start tackling even more advanced stuff with the spline pen. So like I said, if you got any questions, now's the time to ask. So if that's the only... Yeah, so I'll quit out of here.
Does anyone have anything for me to look at tonight? Any ideas or anything for titles and sequences? The final one, so you're going to do one animation. It's going to be 15 seconds long at minimum. So make sure you've got your text up long enough to read it. Like, uh, show you. So if I go. Because there's always students who focus more on 15 seconds and you can't even read the text because it goes by too fast. my letting so let's just do something simple I'm gonna do a fade just so I don't waste everybody's time okay so normally after it stops moving you want it up long enough for people to read it twice okay so based upon how much text you're using Keep that in mind, all right? So I'm gonna get rid of those keyframes. And I added these to Canvas. Uh, so I'm gonna go Files, Virtual, some bonus material. We'll try all slides and art files. So I've got light leaks and lens flares, leaders, ink videos. I'm going to just grab one of these. Let's try ink seven. Okay, so that's what that's doing. Stop that. Come on, look out. So ink seven, I'm going to download that. And there's the path to where it is. So like I said, there's light leaks, there's ink, there's textures stuff to play around with. So I'm going to bring that ink into here. Put it over top. Here's the effect. That's what it's doing. Since this has so much tonal range to it, I'm going to use it as a luma mat. So I'm in my modes. Remember, these are your switches. You click toggle switches and modes to go back and forth. The mask goes over your face like a Halloween mask. So I click the layer below. I'm going to choose Luma Matte, and let's put a color behind this just so it's easier on our eyes. Okay, so this is going backwards then. So let's do Luma Invert. Now it's coming on the way I want it to. So I'm going to hit the space bar, like such. That's an example of using a Luma Matte to animate on text. And if it's going too slow, you can always speed it up. Uh, to speed up clips inside After Effects, just right click, time, time stretch. And I'm showing you this because we got a little bit of time left in the lecture, so it's always good to get some extra learning. Stretch factor 100, that means normal speed. This original file's 10 seconds and six frames. So if I change this to 200, it's now 20 seconds and 12 frames. That means going 200 is playing at half the speed. So now it's going to be twice as slow. And the clip got longer. Okay. So if I went right-click time, time stretch, 50, that's twice as fast. It was originally 10 minutes, six frame, uh, 10 seconds, six frames. Now it's five seconds, three frames. The clip got shorter because we sped it up. When you slow it down, it gets longer. When you speed it up, it gets shorter. Like such. Any questions on that? All right. Anybody see anything that inspires them that you want me to help break down or? 
Okay, I just had a question about the next assignment. Yes, that's what I'm here for. Um, should we be um, sending you one of those? Oh, oh storyboard? Um, storyboard, yeah. Yes. Yeah, send me a storyboard. Just, you know, jot it down real fast. Take a picture of it with your phone. Does Remember, you are not graded on your storyboard, so it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to convey the message. Okay. I can't not make a pretty one, but that's <laughs> <laughs> Love that modesty. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, animate a title sequence or um, a credit sequence. I already showed you some from, like, only murders in the building, uh, Shutter, when they did the monsters, uh, behind the monsters, and I showed you Lock and Key season two. So you got a reference of, you know, stuff you can do in Illustrator. I mean, in After Effects, you know. Think about, you know, using mats, Luma mats or Alpha mats, texture, you know, blending modes, just really drive it home. Come up with something really eye catching. Professor? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that we could use videos that we have. Um, you can use video clips, but you can. Okay, so here's there's two no's for this assignment. Everybody ready? Okay, here's no number one. You cannot use a pre existing franchise. Like you can't do a Star Wars title sequence. Got it? So don't go grabbing the look and feel of Star Wars. You know, nothing copyright. It's got to be your own thing that you thought up. And here's the other no. You can't just use video. Like, you can't grab your phone and film something. You know what I mean? But you can use video clips. As long as you've got motion design in it. You know, like text and all the stuff we've covered. You can use video. But just don't do a video project and say... Look, stuff's moving. That's motion design. No, that's video. There's a difference between video and motion design. Got it? Okay. And what if we had a video and is there some way that, like, you can take the character out of the, or the, the person out of a video and there, just have them, like, on a screen? There's, there's, there's a little bit of, yeah, you can do it. It's a little processor heavy. Like, I use this video clip as a motion element, like, as a Luma mat. It is a video clip, but I'm doing some motion with it. Got it? So there are ways of taking people out of video and you use um, and actually I'm glad you brought this up. So I'm going to import it by double clicking here or you could click and drag or, you know, file import file. All right. Now watch this. Go we'll drag it into there. Let's scale it up a little bit. When you're editing clips like this. You double click on it in your timeline, and look, now it's opened up as an image, okay? We're in the layer, not the composition. This is our animation. There's the thing we're working on. So I believe it'd be Roto. Roto brush, that's what I was thinking of. So I'm just gonna draw a line down here, and let's see what it does. See how it got some of her? So there are ways of, of newer ways of doing it. This is version two. Quality, try best. And I know everyone was warning, like if you're using the new Roto brush, you've got to change this or that setting. I'll look up what it is um, that you should be concerned about and get back to you on that. But uh, you've got to do every frame, you know. Um, also, if you hold down Alt, you get a red brush, that's to subtract, green add. So if I get this, and I said, oh, wait, I didn't want that. I hold down Alt and I paint over it to get rid of it. Got it? Like such. So red subtracts, green adds. And then, uh, you know, you can feather it if you want. Change the contrast, shift the edge. But, uh, yeah, so once you do that, you've got to... Um, So you got to roto through the whole thing. So clearly when you're doing that, you want the fewest amount of frames possible. You know, so that it renders it faster. But that's the way you would do it. Right. And, and then once you've got it and you like it, you hit the freeze button. That's right. Yeah. So then it's got to run through all that stuff. So 
Yeah, I would. I'll look for a good video on um, removing it because there is also like, see what I mean? Like this is going to take such a pain. It's like content aware, Phil. I think that's another way of doing it. There's also free AI software online that is frighteningly good at it. So I'll look up that for you as well. That might actually be the easiest way um, if, if this becomes too daunting. Because I normally don't have to roto stuff out. I normally try and avoid it whenever possible. Okay, I just had some ideas for the next project. And I was like, what was, like, I was able to do or not, you know? Yeah, I'll look it up for you and let you know. I, just, I, I like to know that there's something that I can mess around with. And, you know, I just didn't know you could do that kind of stuff on there. Yeah, you can, but like I said, it's, it's incredibly time-consuming. Oh, come on. Did I hit shutdown? Oh, here we go, task manager. Do you use external hard drive to or no? Yeah, I have two or three external hard drives. Okay. It saved everything. I need to back up all the work that I've been doing. Yep, make sure you back up everything to Google Drive as well so you don't lose it. Yeah. I ask you having two hard drives in two separate places just in case it happens to one, at least. Okay, so I'm going to look for that other thing real quick while I'm here uh, because apart from the videos on on Canvas the, on the on the home page uh, where you see both um, assignments from past two yeah um, are there any other um, ideas in the reference or is it the same thing yeah so if you went. If you go into files in Canvas, reference files, homework to reference, I've got a bunch of links, um, like references here, like. I'm going to check them out after the lecture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, it always pays to look at professional work. I don't, I don't know what I want. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that might work for you is. See. Trying to find the panel for it. It is uh here it is content aware fill. So I got there by going window content aware fill. So I can drag that over here if I want. And let's, I think what you do for that is you've got to mask the area you're interested in. So I'm just going to draw a mask and see if that, now we're starting to see something. Um, and then let's just only do a couple frames. Because I really don't feel like waiting all night for this. So we'll do two frames. And range. Where here? Sure. Be sure this is a little more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I think I would do. Create a reference frame. I'm think I'm just working out loud on this. Um, let's try generate fill layer and see what happens. Now I've got this fills folder. What's in it? That's the. That's our reference frame, and that looks like the person not removed. Yeah, so I'll look up a tutorial on it because they keep changing it all the time. And I know it's like, you know, come up with a mask and all that stuff. Uh,
And I think there's an... Um, well, actually, let's try... Let's try Roto person from video. This one might be After Effects as well. Yes, I'll look it up, but there are ways of doing it with AI. There's a little bit of goofiness happening right there, but. And I'll come back with an answer and I'll tell you how long it took me to take something out of a video, you know, because I've got tons of videos, interviews I've shot. I just grab something and take the person out of it and see how long that took. Like I said, you definitely want to use the shortest amount of clip possible, like just the part you want to take them out of, like split it up. You know what I mean? Because the longer the clip, the longer it's going to take that that much. I can tell you for sure. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll grade everything this weekend from the first homework, but, you know, you can always redo stuff up until the last night of class. Just keep working little by little each week. Spring break. Monday, Tuesday. Oh, okay, so Monday, Tuesday. Spring break. All right, yeah, so it's all week, it looks, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, so no class next week. <laughs> but if you do want me to look at something during class, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Like, I'll check my mail uh, Tuesday and Thursday morning to see if anybody wrote me. So, all right, great. You get a week off. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you let me know. Any other questions? And I'll email that tomorrow, reminding people there's no class next week because of spring break. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, send you whatever idea open by next week. All right, excellent. And like I said, you got the rest of the semester to work this out. So look at some professional stuff, you know, like go, go yeah. through those references and, uh, you know, because there's some there's some professional stuff you can do in After Effects without needing 3D. You know, just have a really great art style, a solid idea, and take your time little by little each week. Okay. Excellent. Anything else? All right. Well, have a great weekend and a good spring break next week. And I'll see everyone the week after that. All right. Thank you. Good night. No problem. Have a good night. All right, bye.